Jan is, what are your latest findings regarding to factors that influence companies the most when it comes to implementation of sustainability into core strategy, into their DNA? Uh, the primary factor here is that companies are slowly but steadily realizing that we're moving into a different world. We're moving into a fundamentally different competitive landscape. Why? Because the whole host of environmental issues that we are facing are deteriorating. Think about, of course, climate change, but also all the other uh, problems like the loss of biodiversity, the problem with plastics, the deforestation, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we're also facing a whole host of social issues like uh, health and security issues, uh, as, as COVID has um, uh, revealed to us, but also perhaps going forward issues of mental health, employee well-being, gender pay equality, gender issues, human rights issues, and so on. So we're going into a world where, unfortunately, all these challenges are deteriorating. So that's point number one. Point number two is that, well, businesses do not exist in a social vacuum. They don't exist only in what we have you know, in the past defined as the economic world, they exist in this world that is currently suffering by all of these uh, uh, problems. So we see those problems in a very material way, in other words, in a very important way, mm -hmm. affecting companies' business models. I'll ask you the second question, which is also about the financial, maybe uh, financial pressure uh, that uh, because I think that we both agree that factors uh, that companies are most interested in uh, are those which positively affect in the bottom line. Uh, can you share with us uh, some cases where implementation of sustainability into core strategy affects companies' bottom line? About profitability of companies, mm -hmm. well, the, we, we already see this, right? If you believe, if you, if you are on board with my argument that the competitive, competitive landscape is dramatically uh, uh, changing, then now we're going into a period of disruption. I often say that sustainability is, in fact, the mother of all disruptions. Why? Because it comes from these domains, in other words, the environmental and social domains, where traditionally companies, right, have limited experience, knowledge, in order to in, in terms of how to handle these issues. So some um, of, of my work uh, has actually looked at this idea of how, do, uh, how well do companies uh, perform when they genuinely, when they truly, not just uh, box ticking, not just greenwashing, when they actually integrate environmental and social issues into, their, into the way they do business. And I th in my view, at least, the evidence is overwhelming that these are better performing companies, whether you talk about operational performance, market performance, whether you talk about short term or long term, these companies perform better because you know what? It's simple. It's a simple, simple. It's a, it's an, it's an, a straightforward adaptation story. These are organizations that are a better fit for these very fast changing positions. Mm -hmm. But I should also argue here by the uh, note here, by the way, that what happens in every disruption? Well, just look at the corporate graveyard. Corporate graveyard is packed with once iconic brands like Sears, Polaroid, Kodak, Blockbuster, companies that failed to adapt to arguably smaller disruptions. We know that companies, let's call them high sustainability companies, right? Have preferential access to human capital. We just mm -hmm. discussed this, right? The best and the brightest and the young generations want to work for companies that are actually committed to these issues. That's precisely why the oil and gas industry, for instance, or mining have, uh, have trouble recruiting people. So preferential access to human capital. We There is academic evidence that shows that companies that commit to sustainability and build the structures for sustainability actually mm -hmm. deliver more and higher quality innovation. 
Why? Because you have a long-term horizon, more ambitious objectives, and you allow the, your employees the psychological safety to experiment and fail in the process, much more so than companies that don't have that commitment to sustainability. Mm -hmm. the, the other area that I have done a lot of research in is this idea of capital markets. We have a lot of evidence that companies with a high sustainability credentials gain better access to finance. And it makes okay. a lot of sense, right? And that's why you've seen the proliferation of so many new financial instruments from green bonds, sustainable development goals, and so uh, uh, goals, bonds, and so on, mm -hmm. social bonds, uh, green loans, green mortgages in some cases, and so on. So the financial system is not only waking up to the risks, but it, 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 uh, it wakes up to the opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. and, and rewards these companies. In, in some other of my work, I've actually shown that the analyst perceptions of high sustainability companies are becoming increasingly more optimistic, in other words, more positive. Currently, global economy faces COVID crisis. And is there any lesson that business should learn out yeah. of it when we compare it to the potential climate crisis, which is ahead? Uh, the COVID-19 has exposed a, a, a lot of these inefficiencies that low sustainability companies have. In other words, I, I like to use this phrase, which is it's, it's in the mud that the diamonds sh shine, right? <laughs> so what we've seen is that I think companies with high sustainability credentials create these intangible assets, these mm -hmm. more deeper and fundamental relationships with their stakeholders. And those relationships become particularly valuable when you go into a crisis, not only in good times, right? Mm -hmm. now, what have we learned about COVID-19 through COVID-19? Well, we have learned about, well, perhaps even rediscovered the S in the ESG, in other words, the social aspect and things like employee safety, uh, work-life balance, employee mental health, uh, risk in supply chains, and in interdependency across different actors in the supply chain, and so on, have all gone to the uh, come to the forefront. Within a coming decade, uh, what are, according to your opinion, um, factors that will affect uh, most significantly the way how global economy will look like in 2030? I think that we're going to see a lot of developments in the uh, area of reporting, ESG and sustainability reporting. I think that we're going to go into a world with radically higher levels of transparency, both by uh, business organizations and by asset managers and investors in terms of how are we using this big uh, capital allocation system that we have in order to build a better future. I hope and pray that we're going to see an acceleration in investments in order to advance the sustainable development goals. There are positive signs that we're going to see more uh, collaboration across countries in order to achieve those objectives. I do expect to see, and I would like to see even faster changes when it comes mm -hmm. to our energy system, our transportation system, uh, and, and, and pretty much all the, the rethinking traditional industries, industries like the airline industry, like the construction industry, like the cement industry, transportation industry, and so on that are big. And of course, the energy system uh, mm -hmm. that are big um, uh, polluters that, uh, that emit a lot of greenhouse gases and, and, and kind of try to rein that in and, and meet our, um, our um, uh, targets. I do, on the social front, I do expect to see more activism because the truth of the matter is, although we are moving in the right direction, we are not moving with the right speed and magnitude. We need to do much more and we, we need to do much more faster. Uh, you are also responsible for the course Sustainability Leadership and Corporate Responsibility at the London Business School. Uh, many times we are asked to recommend companies, uh, representatives, any kind of education in this field. Can you tell us uh, what is the goal of your course and what is the outcome for the participants? The idea here is that this is a course that is targeting meet to senior level executives that very simply and perhaps very powerfully want to transition their companies into this new economy.
right, into this mm -hmm. new competitive la landscape. What I would call is in an enterprise-wide fashion to future-proof their organizations. So I think the, the, the conceptual backbone, if you like, of the course is as follows. First, we discuss what is sustainability? Why does it matter now, right? Um, why should companies care about it? Then we talk about what we discussed together, actually, the, the, the evidence about outperformance. Because the idea here, uh, very, of this course is that I, I would like to create change agents. I would like to create people mm -hmm. that are equipped to move the heart and the mind of their organizations to become more sustainable companies. I put the participants in groups. We do a full stakeholder mapping in order to understand that at the heart of sustainability lie trade-offs, right? Uh, there are often conflicting demands and expectations across a company's different stakeholders. How do you deal with that as an ex executive? How do you take those trade-offs and transform them into forward-looking business opportunities so that you thrive as a business while creating positive social and environmental value? Then we're going, uh, once we understand the business case and the mechanisms, then we're going to questions about organizational design. How mm -hmm. does we move this beyond the uh, CEO? What is the role of corporate governance? What is the uh, role of reporting? What is the role of long-term decision-making? So um, in that part of the course, we, we discuss more about how do I build a sustainable organization? How do I be the house of sustainability? It, If you can give an advice to any company, uh, Yanis, that wants to adopt sustainability into their core business, into their DNA, anywhere yeah. in the world, uh, what are maybe free activities uh, that companies can start doing uh, right away? Absolutely. So first of all, uh, understand what of which ones of these global environmental and social challenges are affecting your industry. In mm -hmm. other words, what is material for your industry? What, which of these pressures and how are going to affect your industries and your company's ability to generate both financial as well as social and environmental value? That's point number one. Point number two is then understand how these pressures translate into your industry in terms of your stakeholders. In other words, a complete and comprehensive mapping of all of your stakeholders to really understand what are their demands, what are their expectations, and importantly, how they contribute to the value creation of your business. So you translate yeah. into those problems and you see where are the trade-offs. And the last component is, I would, I would um, advise that once you do those first two steps, start on your sustainability journey as soon as possible. As a matter of fact, if you haven't started, you're already late because mm -hmm. it's going to take time and effort to build a sustainable organization. You'll have to rethink the identity of the organization, its stakeholder base, its processes and its structures. The sooner you get to it, the better. Never go with a big a box ticking approach. Never go in with an intention to cheat via greenwashing and do not think that sustainability is going to, uh, uh, you can do sustainability piecemeal. Uh, it, it does, it has to be an integrated holistic approach that encompasses each and every person in the organization, each and every person in the stakeholder set of the organization. Yeah. And the last one question is uh, more personal, Yanis. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, can you tell us how you implement the principles of sustainability into your personal life? Yeah, that's a great question, Very. Thank you for asking it. I do my best. Let me start with one thing that I'm very proud. I actually plant one tree every day. Oh, wow. And how do that's I amazing. do that? Uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, there's an app called Tree App. It was set up by LBS uh, alumni, and, and I'm actually advising them. It's a startup. Uh, it's now currently available in UK and Ireland, but I hope they are going to expand in other countries. So the idea is that this app introduces you, it, it has a marketing component to it. Let's say I go on the app, right? And I watch three screens of a brand, short screens, like a couple of seconds every screen. And when uh, I do that, then the brand pays this company to plant a tree. So Tree App is basically selling advertising space.